ஹலோ வெல்கம் டு லா எக்ஸலன்ஸ் இன் அவர் ரீகேப் ட்வெண்ட்டி ட்வெண்ட்டி ஒன் வி ஆர் டிஸ்கஸிங் மந்த்லி கரண்ட் அஃபேர்ஸ் இன் டுடேஸ் வீடியோ வில் லெட் இஸ் டிஸ்கஸ் அக்டோபர் ட்வெண்ட்டி ட்வெண்ட்டிஸ் கரண்ட் அஃபேர்ஸ் திஸ் இஸ் பார்ட் த்ரீ ஆஃப் அக்டோபர் ட்வெண்ட்டி ட்வெண்ட்டி பிடிஎஃப் ஆஃப் திஸ் பர்டிகுலர் வீடியோ இஸ் அவைலபிள் இன் த டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் இஃப் யூ வாண்ட் டு ரைட் டெஸ்ட் சீரீஸ் பேஸ்ட் ஆன் திஸ் வீடியோ யூ கேன் ஜாயின் த டெஸ்ட் சீரீஸ் பை கிளிக்கிங் ஆன் த லிங்க் மென்ஷன் இன் த டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் லெட் இஸ் டிஸ்கஸ் எஸ்என்டி ரிலேட்டட் கரண்ட் அஃபேர்ஸ் ஃபஸ்ட் ஒன் இஸ் டிஆர்டிஓ ஸ்மார்ட் மிஷன் ஸ்மார்ட் மிஷன் மீன்ஸ் சூப்பர் சோனிக் மிசைல் அசிஸ்டட் ரிலீஸ் ஆஃப் டார்பிடோஸ் டார்பிடோஸ் ஆர் ரிலீஸ்ட் யூஸிங் தி மிசைல்ஸ் ஸோ சச் சிஸ்டம் இஸ் நோன் அ ஸ்மார்ட் சிஸ்டம் ஸ்மார்ட் சிஸ்டம் இஸ் அ லைட் வெயிட் ஆன்டி சப்மரீன்ஸ் டார்பிடோ சிஸ்டம் ஃபார் ஆன்டி சப்மரீன் வார்ஃபேர் விச் இஸ் யூஸ்ட் ஃபார் பியாண்ட் த ரேஞ்ச் ஆஃப் திஸ் டார்பிடோ லெட் சே டார்பிடோஸ் ரேஞ்ச் இஸ் ஓன்லி ஃபியூ கிலோமீட்டர்ஸ் now another missile will be used to uplift this or to increase the range of this particular one and then this particular torpedo targets the ship or the submarine that is how smart system works smart system is it can be launched from a warship or truck based on coast uh, coastal battery which is like a normal supersonic missile it's not it's like a normal supersonic missile but its range can be enhanced using other missiles other missiles help next issue is nobel prizes last year nobel prizes 2020 in medicine these three individuals they got nobel prize for discovering hepatitis c virus as of now for hepatitis b we have vaccine but for hepatitis c we don't have vaccine but out of hepatitis b and c hepatitis b is more infectious and can be very very deadly Now, hepatitis C virus was discovered by these three individuals. So, we identified that even after taking hepatitis B vaccine, some people are getting illness, showing the symptoms of hepatitis. So, why this was happening was the question earlier. Now, we know clearly that there is one more strain called as hepatitis C. For that, they got this particular Nobel Prize. Then came physics. So, Nobel physics. So, Roger Penrose, he got Nobel physics for discovering the black hole formation Uh, using using general theory of relativity and genzel and andreja guess they too got the nobel physics because of discovery of supermassive com- compact object at the center of our galaxy supermassive compact object at the center of the galaxy and then with regard to chemistry they got the nobel prize because because of the method of genome editing crispr cas9 genome editing with regard to literature uh, this louis gulick she got uh, she got uh, the literature because of her poetic uh, voice and poetic uh, value value of universalism that is promoted through her novels next one is world food program this got nobel peace prize its efforts to combat hunger contribution for bettering the conditions of life bettering the conditions of life in the conflict prone area so hunger is a hunger is a sin hunger is a evil which needs to be fought for that global hunger global food program or world food program has contributed its fair share next one is economic share economic sciences it is for improvements in the auction theory auction theory and inventions in the new auction formats based on this nobel prizes nobel prizes are declared this is the list of nobel prizes i have placed certain images over here please go through them once nobel prize in medicine why they got who are they then nobel prize in chemistry for crispr cas9 technology crispr cas9 technology then came nobel physics nobel physics nobel physics for understanding the phenomena of universe especially the black holes next is nobel peace prize this is given to an institution world economic forum right world economic world, sorry world food program this is the agency they got the nobel peace prize already few of the individuals have got the nobel peace prize latest one before this is abi ahmed of ethiopia abi ahmed of europea to to make a peace deal with the northern african countries he was granted with the nobel peace prize these are the nominations of nobel peace prize we will discuss them 
again in october by the time you write or after your examination nobel prizes will be declared then you can read in detail next issue is nobel prize in economy nobel prize in economy so these three individuals they got nobel prize in economy for their proposal of new auction formats new auction formats this is the nobel prize in literature just go through this once next issue is rise 2020 summit rise means responsible artificial intelligence for social empowerment 2020 this is the first of kind of international summit that india has organized along with mit and niti aayog in this context we have to understand what are the initiatives that we have taken to promote artificial intelligence in india let us understand that with regard to this current fires india and its strategy in development of ai is important it is expected that india ai can add up to 957 billion dollars to the indian economy by 2035 india can leverage use of artificial intelligence for inclusive development for representing representing countries ai for all strategy for that india has launched national ai strategy national ai portal and it is a planning to use this ai across various sectors and india also joined the global partnership on artificial intelligence this is a alliance of various countries this gapi go global alliance on artificial intelligence in this india has become part of it these are some of the initiatives related to india in artificial intelligence here we have to understand artificial intelligence is used in almost all the sectors now and it has challenges cyber security challenges deep fake challenges that means ai provides opportunities as well as challenges these two needs to be addressed ai plays an important role in fourth industrial revolution in this context fourth industrial revolution should bring in more security along with more uh, u- utilities or applications of ai next issue is anti radiation missile rudram rudram is the name of anti radiation missile it is the first indigenously built anti radiation missile that is developed by drdo it is the new generation anti radiation missile its test was successfully its uh, it was tested successfully recently ins uh, it has ins gps navigation indian navigation system gps navigation system with passive head rudram hits the radiation targets that means what it does is it simply identifies the source of radiation let's say radar radar emits electromagnetic electromagnetic wavelengths so it identifies radars and it targets them like that radiation is observed radiation is uh, detected by these ra- by these missiles and they destroy the source of radars or a source of radiations so this will help us during the warfare anti radiation missiles have been developed by countries from cold war days now we have this anti anti radiation missiles we have agm 45 alarm likewise many anti radiation missiles are there rudram is india's indigenously made uh, anti radiation missile developed by drdo next issue is evin system e means electronic vin means vaccine intelligence network system that means evin is an innovative technological solution to strengthen the immunization supply chain what the government does is under national health mission it tracks where the vaccine stocks are there to which states these vaccine to- stocks are moving where they are stored in the, which cold chains likewise everything will be monitored under evin system modified version of evin is developed as covin platform covin platform is based on uh, improvisation on e- evin platform this helps in building the big data related to vaccines this helps in maintaining the optimum stocks of vaccines and it helps in identifying the stock outs and uh, replenishment of the stocks on a timely basis for that evin system helps it is implemented under national health mission by ministry of health and family welfare it provides real time information on stock uh, vaccine stocks and flows next issue is asteroid bennu 
NASA's Osiris Rex mission. Osiris Rex full form is Origins, Spectral Interpretation, Resource Identification, Security and Regolith Explorer. Osiris Rex, Rex mission is sent uh, to study this asteroid Bennu. It has touched asteroid Bennu and it collected samples. It, it started its journey back home and it will reach the Earth by 2023. Astro this asteroid was discovered by a team in the year 1999. Let us understand a little bit more about asteroid Bennu. This is Osiris Rex mission launched by NASA. It will reach in it will reach the Earth by 2023. Bennu is an asteroid located at a distance about two, 200 million miles away from the Earth. Osiris Rex mission is NASA's first mission meant to return the samples from the ancient asteroid. This mission was launched in the year 2016 and it, it reached in 2018. It, uh, it, uh, it moved around this particular asteroid for a few years. It has touched down and it is bringing back the samples to the Earth. As it is the ancient asteroid, we will understand how this entire solar system formed by studying the samples from this. That is why we study the asteroids. We also study and track the asteroids. Uh, uh, whether they are potentially hazardous to the earth or not. For that also we study the asteroid. Asteroids are generally located between Mars and Jupiter which is known as asteroid belt. The four planets are known as inner planets, outer four planets, outer planets. In between we have a rocky area known as asteroid belt. In this area these asteroids are located. Asteroid Bennu is considered one of the ancient asteroids. Next issue is Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovation, CEPI, very very important. CEPI along with WHO has brought in many initiatives recently that is why it is in use. It is an innovative global partnership. CEPI is an innovative global partnership between public, private, philanthropic and civil society organizations. This is working to accelerate the development of vaccines. Again, as various infections, this played important role in development of various corona vaccines. This was launched in the year 2017 at World Economic Forum in Davos. And this was founded by many countries, many governments, including Norway, India, many NGOs, including Bill and Melinda Gates, Welcome Trust, World Economic Forum, etc. Many countries are part of it. Its initial priority, Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovation. A major priority is to is addressing the pathogens including Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, uh, Nipha, Chikungunya, Rift Valley, Rift Valley Fever, now SARS-CoV-2. These are some of the important areas, epidemic diseases on which this particular grouping is working. This provides the funding and innovative solutions to deal with the epidemics and it also provides preparedness measures to deal with the epidemics. Next issue is Real Mango software. Real Mango or Rare Mango is an illegal software for railway ticket booking that has been recently found out by Railway Protection Force. This software logs into IRCTC website through multiple IRCTC IDs. This illegal software is sold through uh, various structures, through bitcoins, payment is done through bitcoins and it bypasses the captcha. It synchronizes the bank OTP with the help of mobile apps and it books the tickets automatically. It autofills the passenger payment details in the forms. That is how it books multiple tickets simultaneously. This is a fraud in IRCTC web that has happened with the IRCTC website. This was busted recently by Railway Protection Force. That's why this was in news. Real Mango or Rare Mango software. Next issue is Indigen Initiative. Indigen. Indigen means Indigenous Genome Project. Indigen full form is Indigenous Genome Project. This particular project is an indi Indigenous Initiative of CSIR inst and uh, under that Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology and CSIR Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology. These two institutions started this initiative. Under this initiative, 1000 Indians and their genes are gene samples are collected and these will be genome sequenced in detail. This helps in two ways. One, readily sc available scan genomes will be there. So this will advise the people of the health risks. 
second one it understands the variation of genes among the indian population variations of genes among the indian population it uh, this indian first indian genome sequence was done by csir in the year 2009 after that this is the large scale project dbt department of biotechnology has funded for sequencing of 10000 indian genomes this project is for 1000 that means this is a subset of this in this context we have to understand what is a genome genome means complete set of genes in that particular organism complete set of genes and genome sequencing means matching a gene with a particular function is known as genome sequencing this helps this indigen initiative helps in genome sequencing of various individuals next initiative is india photovoltaic edge 2020 niti aayog ministry of new and renewable energy invest india these three they have organized a global symposium known as india for india photovoltaic edge 2020 through a virtual summit this particular summit is for catalyzing the india photovoltaic manufacturing pv cells pv cells are important for solar production so pv cells in this particular summit wafers and cells modules and production equipment supply chain issues these all were discussed why this is important renewable energy is important in that so we have huge capacity for solar energy to develop solar energy we need pv cells photovoltaic cells for that new technologies new innovation is needed that is why we want global cooperation for that particular purpose only india photovoltaic edge 2020 summit was held india became the third largest solar capacity country in the world and it has set 450 gigawatts renewable capacity by 2030 out of which 300 gigawatts is solar power and india has promised in indcs under paris climate change agreement wherein we promote the solar energy in this context this uh, indian photovoltaic edge 2020 is one step towards this particular ambition that's why india is part of international solar alliance its headquarters is also located in india one sun one world one grid initiative this has been discussed to develop the solar energy so likewise india is developing leadership role with regard to solar energy this is one such initiative india photovoltaic edge 2020 initiative next issue is pinaka weapon system ministry of defense has announced that it is going to acquire it is it has signed a contracts with the indian companies to supply six regiments of pinaka rocket system rocket launching system and these will be deployed along pakistan and india borders what is pinaka weaponry system it is an indigenously developed rocket system it is developed by drdo as an alternative to multi barrel lo- rocket launching system of russian made one that is known as grad so we, this will be alternative for that this is a multi barrel rocket launch system that means multiple rockets can be launched with the single rocket system it can fire 12 rockets over a period of 44 seconds so it has huge speed it has huge speeds and one battery of pinaka system consists of six launch vehicles it can neutralize an area up to 1 km by 1 km that is 1 square kilometers operational range mark 1 version of pinaka can uh, can cover up to 40 km mark 2 uh, that is upgraded one can cover up to 75 km important issue in this is it uses the indigenously built navigation system that is indian regional navigational satellite system the navigation system of the missile is indian regional navigational satellite system pinaka is multi barrel rocket launch system next issue is shaurya missiles we have submarine launched missiles and land launched missiles submarine launched missile k15 its land based version is known as shaurya missile it is a land variant of submarine launched ballistic missile k15 sagarika it has a range of 750 km it is a ballistic missile k here k15 k14 k denotes kalam abdul kalam kalam these missiles they can k4 missiles k15 missiles they can be launched from the submarines 
సౌ శౌర్యా మిజైల్స్ అండ్ కే మిజైల్స్ శౌర్యా మిజైల్స్ ఆర్ ల్యాండ్ వర్షన్ ఆఫ్ కే ఫిఫ్టీన్ సాగరికా మిజైల్స్ కే ఫ్యామిలీ మిజైల్స్ ఆర్ సబ్మరీ సబ్మరీన్ బేస్డ్ లాంచ్ మిజైల్స్ కలాం అండ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఇట్ ఇట్ క్యాన్ బీ లాంచ్ ఫ్రమ్ ది నేవీ ప్లాట్ఫామ్స్ ఇట్ ఈస్ డెవలప్డ్ ఇన్ నైన్టీన్ నైంటీస్ అండ్ నౌ ఇండియా హ్యాస్ ట్రయాడ్ ల్యాండ్ సీ అండ్ ఎయిర్ బేస్డ్ కే మిజైల్స్ and their modified versions can be launched from all the three platforms that is the significance shaurya missile is the ballistic missile which can be launched from the land source land base next issue is chepos mission chepos uh, european space uh, space agency has launched characterizing exoplanet satellite there is a satellite which observes the exoplanet what do we mean by exoplanet exo means outside planet means the planets that exist outside our solar system exoplanets they exist outside our solar system such planets are known as exoplanets chepos mission is to understand the exoplanets observe the exoplanets so this particular solar uh, chepos mission has recently observed various uh, exoplanets that is why this is a news this is the first mission first dedicated mission to study bright and nearby stars and the exoplanets located within that solar system it focuses on super earth to neptune size range of um, exoplanets with various characteristics this helps in exploring alien world exoplanet means planets that 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 are there outside our solar system are known as exoplanets chepos mission helps in identifying the exoplanets outside the outside our solar system next issue is aquaponics aquaponics pilot project of aquaponics facility was developed by cedac with the help of the uh, uh, guru angad dev veterinary university luthiana punjab This is a state of the art facility where advanced sensors are placed for automatic monitoring and farming system. CDAC is computer supercomputer developing agency. Why this is involved in aquaponics because it developed various sensors for this. Supercomputing power is been developed by CDAC. CDAC is the agency and this particular project is supported by Mighty. By the way, what is aquaponics? Aquaponics is self watering. closed loop system which uses fish effluent fish effluent to provide nutrients for the plants this recirculates the environment and it grows the vegetables at an accelerated rate it is component of hydroponics it uses fisheries as well as agriculture that is aquaponics hydroponics means it uses what it grows water based nutrient rich solution and in that plants are grown it doesn't use any soil it just uses the nutrient medium for the root support aquaponic system was recently developed aquaponics is one of the sustainable methods of agriculture where we are using technology for the development of uh, uh, growth and the development of agriculture under aquaponics fisheries and plants both are grown simultaneously next issue is blue origin blue origin is a company Jeff Bezos yes blue origin they launched new shepherd new shepherd was successfully tested last year that's why this was a news new shepherd uh, first uh, this new shepherd is named af- after first american astronaut known as alan shepherd so this particular one new shepherd is reusable sub orbital rocket system it uh, takes off vertically it lands vertically on this uh, new shepherd we have a crew module this year 2020 2021 this crew module was launched and it successfully orbited around the earth around the earth cross the karman line that is why this is very significant last year blue origin was in use because of this new shepherd launch vehicle this was launched by us based company known as blue origin blue origin is founded by jeff bezos this blue origin believes that humanity needs to expand to expand its resources and it has to move the harmful industries out of the earth that is one of the goals but that has its own negative consequences as of now what is new shepherd what is its importance what is blue origin these are the important issues to consider next let us understand environment and disaster management related current affairs our first issue is eight beaches were given 
blue flag certification in india india is the first country to to award to be awarded blue flag certification for eight beaches in a single attempt by fee what is fee what is blue flag certification let us understand that these are the eight beaches that are given blue flag certification one is shivrajpur in gujarat gogla in diu kasargod in karnataka padubiri in karnataka kappad in kerala rishikonda in ap golden beach in puri odisha radhanagar in andaman and nicobar islands these are the eight uh, uh, beaches that were given blue flag certification in india recently what do we mean by blue flag certification for the cleanest beaches blue flag certification is given it is a voluntary eco label which is given by foundation for environmental education it is a it is an ngo found founded in in the year 1985 india has its own eco labeling system known as beams system beams initiative beach environment and aesthetic management services it is maintained under integrated coastal management project icjd This beams initiative is ma- managed by Society of Integrated Coastal Management. This provides a certification or eco labeling for the Indian beaches. Blue flag certification is international certification. It is a voluntary certification um, given by FEE. Next issue is National Green Tribunal at 10 years. NGT Act was passed in the year 2010. Now last year that is 2020 it has completed 10 years that's why it was in news ngt is a statutory body established under national green tribunal act 2010 it has one full time chairperson and not less than 10 members it is it is established for effective and expeditious expeditious disposal of cases related to environmental protection its order is binding its order is binding in it acts as a civil court it deals with the cases related to following acts one is water pollution prevention and control of pollution act water cess act forest conservation act air prevention and control of pollution act environmental protection act public liability insurance act biological diversity act this is important it doesn't cover wildlife protection act under wildlife protection act we have wildlife protection board this wildlife uh, protection board or central board for wildlife we call it as national board for wildlife national board for wildlife it deals with the controversies and cases related to this particular act otherwise remaining major environmental related laws they come under ngt's jurisdiction ngt national green tribunals jurisdiction it has powers similar to civil court next issue is hyderabad floods and urban heat island last year october hyderabad has experienced severe floods one of the reasons include encroachment of encroachment of lakes and building the structures in the low lying areas climate change global warming along with urban heat island effect what is urban heat island effect urban areas due to heavy pollution because of industrial activity transport activity less albedo urban areas experience more temperatures as compared to other areas so highly temperate this these areas they have high temperatures such areas are known as urban heat islands in these uh, areas cumulonimbus clouds form they give rise to sudden rainfall that also leads to flash floods there are direct factors indirect factors for urban floods natural factors are there urbanization man made reasons are there indirectly improper maintenance of drainage roads these are some of the reasons for urban floods in hyderabad encroachment of wetlands and improper maintenance of drainage these two are said to be the major reasons for urban floods along with global warming and climate change to deal with this ndma has suggested for suggested to have dedicated urban flood management cell to manage the urban floods dedicated urban flood management should be there that is one of the important suggestions of ndma national disaster management authority on urban floods next issue is himalayan brown bear recently study conducted by geological survey of india has mentioned that himalayan brown bear their numbers are significantly reduced and their biological habitat and their habitats are declining they generally live in northwestern and central himalayan region including india pakistan nepal tibet autonomous region of china and bhutan 
This is the natural habitat of the Himalayan brown bear. Its habitat is high altitude open valleys and pastures. It is in critically endangered list and in sites convention on international trade in endangered species in that it belongs to appendix 1 with regard to indian wildlife protection act it is added as schedule 1 animal that means it is provided with high protection and it is omnivorous that means it consumes both animals smaller animals as well as the uh, plants one of uh, what are the major threats for himalayan brown bears then human animal conflict rapid habitat loss poaching poaching for its claws and organs um bear biting baiting these are some of the some of the threats for himalayan brown bear now these himalayan brown bears are the important species of the himalayan ecosystem that's why they need to be protected next issue is india's air quality and stubble burning in october 2020 if you recollect our trump has made a made a statement saying that india's air is filthy irrespective of his comments we know that indian india and many indian cities they are facing severe air pollution one of the primary sources of air pollution in delhi ncr delhi is stubble burning what do we mean by stubble burning after after cutting the crop the remaining stubble is burnt because of lack of time and high cost of high cost of maintenance in this context it leads to heavy pollution it leads to decrease in the soil fertility it enhances the heat penetration which leads to soil fertility decline open burning of stubble leads to release of harmful gases into the atmosphere such as methane carbon monoxide volatile organic compound and carcinogenic polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons these will affect the human health as well as the environment and soil fertility burning the husk it destroys the nutrients in the soil and it makes the soil less fertile heat generated by uh, this particular when penetrates into the soil it leaves the it re- reduces the moisture and it uh, damages the important microbes that's why this is this needs to be controlled it leads to particulate matter pollution pm particulate matter pollution which increases the respiratory illness that's why stubble burning needs to be addressed as soon as possible next issue is ratification of seven pops persistent organic pollutants we have a convention known as stockholm convention under that convention union cabinet has recently approved seven chemicals listed under stockholm convention there are 12 chemicals that are listed as persistent organic pollutants under stockholm convention out of which seven are approved by indian cabinet and they said ministry of environment can approve other chemicals stockholm convention is a global treaty to protect human health and the environment from persistent organic pollutants this was signed in 2001 it became for it came into force in the year 2004 persistent pa- organic pollutants are listed in stockholm convention what are the objectives of stockholm convention one safe transfer of safer alternatives need to be found for pops additional pops which are there they needs to be removed stockpiles needs to be removed and international cooperation for pop fu- free future needs to be worked out these are the objectives of stockholm convention now let us understand what are the pops and how they affect our human health persistent organic pollutants these are the identified chemical substances they live they stay in the environment for for a longer period they bioaccumulate they they are less soluble in the water they have adverse human impacts they lead to nervous the damage to the nervous system diseases to the immune system they cause reproductive disorders they interfere with the growth of the child and child development that is why pops are very very dangerous in this context there are 12 pops persistent organic pollutants that are identified under under stockholm convention they include eight pesticides including alrin chlor chlordane ddt uh, likewise we have eight pesticides two industrial chemicals two by products of industrial substances dirty dozen is related to persistent organic pollutants which are covered under stockholm convention india has ratified it and identified a seven pollutants now and it has given power for the environment ministry 
to identify uh, to to uh, to address other remaining chemicals under stockholm convention next issue is south asian flash flood guidance system recently indian meteorological department launched south asian flash flood guidance system it helps in identifying the disasters beforehand and it gives the guidance flood warning is given prior hand us based hydrological research center has developed it and it is launched by imd based on the rainfall and potential flood scenario flash floods warnings will be given to the countries 6 hours in advance whereas flood risk warning will be given 24 hours in advance india is leading the delegation of nations including bhutan sri lanka bangladesh nepal we all share many reverses are no that's why flash flood forecast is important for that south asian flash flood guidance system is recently launched by imd indian meteorological department next issue is at the short price earth short price is le- recently launched by britain's prince william prince william launched it it's a 50 million pound price it is aimed at funding the innovative solutions for the most pressing environmental challenges what are the five areas one is on protecting and restoring nature second one clean out the air third one reviving the oceans third one building waste free world and fourth one fixing the climate change these are the five areas in these five areas whoever works they will be given these prizes earth short prizes theme of this is these five earth shots will be given funding support this is considered one of the most prestigious global prize in the history of the environment 50 million pounds is a huge amount next issue is zombie fires recently the new study has shown that zombie fires in the arctic region are spreading rapidly they are occurring at a rapid rate which leads to more air pollution more global warming in the arctic region which can lead to arctic amplification very very important term arctic amplification arctic amplification means increase in the temperatures of the arctic region as compared to other areas that is known as arctic amplification zombie fire means let's say there is a fire in this particular region that fire slowly spreads through slowly let's say here fire is there slowly spreads through underground peat that is a un- non-decomposed material and it spreads to another area over a period of time suddenly forest fires comes here without any notice that fi- that kind of fire is known as zombie fires they increase the temperatures in the antarctic region zombie fires are also known as overwintering fires this phenomenon occurs in countries like usa that is alaska region of usa russia and canada where permafrost is there permafrost melting is there because of which zombie fires are becoming more and more common in these areas which can lead to arctic amplification next issue is global nitrous oxide budget recently a new research paper has been published which has said that nitrous oxide and its emissions have increased 30 percent between 1980 to 2016 this particular one is conducted the study has been conducted with the help of international nitrogen initiative and global global carbon project of future earth along with world's climate research program nitrous oxide is long-lived greenhouse gas this is a greenhouse gas and this is also ozone depleting substance it has a lifetime up to 116 plus or minus nine years this is the third most important greenhouse gas after co2 and methane co2 and methane are two top most important greenhouse gases after that nitrous oxide is the third most important greenhouse gas it accumulates in the atmosphere at an increasing rate accumulates at the increasing rates use of nitrogen fertilizers in agriculture increase in the organic fertilizers agriculture production through the anthropogenic NO2 emissions, these are all leading to increase in the nitrous oxide budget in the atmosphere, which leads to global warming and ozone depletion because it is ozone depleting substance as well as uh, greenhouse gas. That is why nitrous oxide is a dangerous uh, element in the air. Next issue is Panna Tiger Reserve. Recently, United Nations uh, Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization included 
Panna Biosphere Reserve in its world network of biosphere reserves. It is a biosphere reserve already, but that status is given in India. But world, it, it is added now in the world network of biosphere reserves. It is located in Madhya Pradesh. It is the third one listed in this particular one after Pachamari and Amarakantak. Pachamari and Amarakantak. These two are important biosphere reserves. After that, this is the one. It is situated in the Vindian mountain range in the northern part of Madhya Pradesh. Ken River is the, is the one of the least polluted tributaries of Emana River. This flows through this particular river. Ken Betwa River interlinking project will also move through this, go through this particular Panna Biosphere Reserve. That why, that's why Ken Betwa interlinking project is in use. That is that has become controversial because it submerges part of Panna, Panna Biosphere and Panna Tiger Reserve. Next issue is Green Buildings. Vice President of India has inaugurated CIS Green Building Congress 2020. What do we mean by Green Building? By design and construction operation, it reduces the negative impacts on the environment. Such buildings are known as green buildings. We have LEAD program, Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. It's a green building certification program used worldwide. LEAD is used as a worldwide green building certification program developed by USA's Green Building Council. It sets the rating system for the design, construction, operation of various buildings. What are the characteristics for a building to be called as a green building? It should use the energy, water and other resources efficiently. Use of renewable energy such as solar energy, pollution waste treatment, indoor air quality should be good, material should be non-toxic and ethical, environment in design and construction, environmental conservation in, in design and construction, quality of life in design and construction, enables adaptation uh, sorry adaptation to the changing climate so if these characteristics are there a few of these characteristics are there such buildings are called as green buildings lead is the leadership in energy and environmental design is the green building certification program green buildings um, green buildings congress was organized in india last year 2020 october last issue is global forest resource assessment Global Forest Resource Assessment 2020 is released by UNFAO, United Nations, Food and Agricultural Organization. Under this Forest Resource Assessment, it has examined the status in, mo in more than 60 variables in 230 countries and territories uh, between 1990 to 2020. The findings of this particular assessment is, forest area has declined all across the world in the last three decades. 178 million hectares of forest land is lost uh, in, in the entire world. Rate of forest loss is, is declined due to the sustainable management taken up by various countries. Naturally, regeneration, regeneration of forests declined since 1990. Only artificial regeneration of forests due to various governmental activities increased but natural regeneration decreased. Such questions can be asked in the prelims. They can ask, consider the following statements regarding global forest resources assessment and they will give one or two statements out of these and we need to identify correct or incorrect statements. That's why such, questions, such areas are important. These are the issues for October 2020. PDF of this particular video is available in the description. Please check that once. All the very best. Share your comments. Thank you very much.